This is kind of our depiction of nutritional ketosis. Uh, and the difference between uh, essentially no ketones, where your ketone fueling and your ketone signaling is put to sleep by eating carbohydrates, to a level between 0.5 and, and 3 millimolar, which is an area in which ketones function as a fuel and an epigenetic signal. Um, and this is what we named nutritional ketosis, because when I went through my training, we, it was either no ketones or ketones are bad for you because of ketoacidosis. The key point is there's a tenfold difference between having had you know, two poached eggs and some bacon for breakfast versus having you know, toast and pancakes for breakfast. So 0 0.1, 0 0.3 is carb fed, one to three is nutritional ketosis. So that's a tenfold difference. But then from one to three up to 10 to 30 is nutritional ketosis. So it's a difference between one to 10 to 100. And that's not subtle. And yet very much often in the literature, people say, oh, well, you know, ketones are bad for you. Uh, but they don't differentiate between 10 and 100. Our clinical experience is that one is better than 0.5, but 0.5 is where clear beneficial effects begin. We have not been able to delineate a benefit in terms of diabetes reversal and weight management above between one and three. Now, there are people doing cancer research, particularly in animals, and work by Dominic D'Agostino and, um, and others suggests that five to seven is, is the optimum if you're a, a mouse or a rat with cancer. We don't, and you know, it's hard to translate from animals to humans. Uh, but to get there, most people would have to take ketone supplements in addition to carb restriction. Uh, and so that's really a, a combination of exogenous ketones plus endogenous ketones. But we still don't know that that's the optimum area. The signs are subtle, and that's people feel more energy, they feel less compulsion around food, cravings get better, but those are very subtle signs. Yeah, I'm typically in the uh, 0.8 to 1 in the morning, and by I'm a person who goes low and comes up in the afternoon. I don't really notice anything. For instance, people talk about ketone breath which is acetone, which is coming. I don't really notice, and, and my wife doesn't notice ketone breath till 0.5. Yeah. Uh, but if I go for a two hour bike ride and come home, she says, stay away. The more insulin resistant a person is, the more impediment there is to fatty acid mobilization. And we think that that's why some people are struggle to get ketones up in even the one to two range. Um, uh, there may be other factors. The other is we know that that when people have an acute inflammatory illness, their ketones go to the basement. But so ketones are a, I mean, sorry, inflammation, you know, acute inflammation is, is the enemy of ketosis. Uh, and I, I don't know the mechanism for that, but it, we saw it in the hospital when we had put patients on intravenous ketogenic diets in preparation for surgery. If they had a wound infection or something, we could tell the infection was coming because the ketones disappeared. Um, uh, I don't think that low-grade inflammation associated, for instance, with diabetes, you know, someone whose C-reactive protein or white cell count are trending upwards, I don't think that's enough to suppress them. An attempt to kind of depict in, in a two-dimensional form uh, how different diets where carbohydrates are shown on the vertical axis and protein on the, this axis, and this is in uh, percent of energy relative to not the one's intake, but one's daily energy expenditure. So this is percent as if one were eating a maintenance diet. And so you say, well, if, if there's 30% um, carbs and there's 20% protein, where's the rest? And that would be the third dimension, which is fat. And we're not showing fat intake on here. So you just have to add in fat intake. But the point is that popular diets, ranging from what I would call an extreme low fat diet, like the Ornish diet in the US, you know, which is a mostly plant, mostly or all plant-based diet and about 60 to 70% carbs, would be way up here, very low in fat, and uh, um, I'm sorry, very, very low, in, low in protein and very low in fat. This is our standard American diet, but you can probably call SAD the standard Australian diet. Um, uh, again, in, in around 50 to 55% of energy is carbs. The Mediterranean diet is, has many definitions, um, uh, and probably the people in the, in the Mediterranean region would, would argue over whose, whose region, sub-region is the best. Uh, but typically it's between 30 and 40 percent of energy as, as, as carbs and, and 10 to 15 percent as fat. And paleo, uh, uh, again, has lots of definitions, um, but, but Professor Lauren Cordain, who really was a scientist who did the initial research on this and defined this, 
uh, defined it as 20 to 30 percent of energy as carbs and, and centering around 30 percent of energy as fat. To be in nutritional ketosis is actually a very small island, metabolic island here. You have to stay under, typically under 10 percent of energy as carbs. And the higher you go in protein, the less carbs you can tolerate because the protein is anti-ketogenic. Um, so we try to get people in the 12 to 20 percent of, of daily energy expenditure as protein um, and keep the carbs under 10 percent. And of course, when you look at that, it's horrifying because when you add up the rest of it, it's 75 to 80 percent of energy is fat.